Hello and welcome to a new video on Cashmere Effect and Complex Time. I'm your host, Trey Zeta, and hopefully you're doing very, very well. First things first, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, second, happy holidays. And uh, here in this video, we're going to be using this book as the motivation, Advances in the Cashmere Effect. Um, I cannot pronounce these names, my, my deepest apologies, but they are written right here. Um, so that's important. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the klein fock gordon equation, and it comes in this form. Uh, this is the D'Alibertin operator uh, to the second power, I guess. Like It's got second derivatives in it, so we denote it with a 2. And here we have some wave equation plus uh, mass squared, c squared, divided by Planck's constant squared. We have another wave equation. This is the time-dependent version uh, in one direction, x. Okay, so this has to equal 0. All this has to equal 0. And the solution, um, I, isn't, I'm not sure if this is a commutator or bracket or how, how really they're describing it, um, but essentially this is uh, what we're aiming for. So uh, we want to create these functions that are essentially of um, the uh, distance between the two superconducting plates or two conducting plates in a vacuum. So that's A, and then we have the mass. Um, and so then we have... Uh, Basically, this, uh, the frequency is the harmonic oscillator, omega sub n, and we're going to add them all up together, and it's going to be our uh, kind of function that we're going to work with. Now, this is where all the divergent sum stuff comes in. This is particularly fascinating and particularly interesting. Particularly interesting. This is our goal. This is what we more or less want to look at. Right? So the method that we're going to uh, partake in is we're going to go from um, regular time to complex time, via Mellon transform, and we're going to evaluate at some uh, num s to, at some beta. Okay, now beta can have a complex part, but in this case, we're just going to look at real parts. Okay, so uh, over here is that formalism. So here is a, a wave equation that we could use, and we've just denotated it uh, here rather uh, slightly. Um, but here we have the Mellon transform of uh, this wave equation with respect to time. We're going to go to complex time. A gamma s pops out. Um, we have uh, c divided by a. Um, a is the distance between the two plates. Uh, this omega um, is the harmonic oscillatory frequencies, uh, all raised to the one half. And then we, once we do the Mellon transform, since only one of uh, these terms here has a time component, uh, it just becomes here. Now, there, notice an imaginary const, imaginary number is there, so that makes things quite interesting. We have this uh, sine k sub n x, okay? And the uh, harmonic frequencies are given here, uh, and or oscillator frequencies are given here, and kn is given right here, pi n divided by a. Now, one of the things I particularly uh, uh, get perplexed about is that they always don't like, always expand the full notation. So here I've expanded all the notation. Um, this is the this is the main form uh, essentially. Um, as you can see, it's it's very close to you know uh, what we've got over here. The only difference is that we have one here and we have this sine uh, k n x. Okay. So we're we're, we're getting very very close. So we pull out the um, you know, sorry. Yeah, we pull out the imaginary. So we're going to set s equal to two. So uh, i to the negative two is negative one, so it pulls out. So now we just have all this left, and we have to plug in uh, gamma of two, so this is all multiplied by two, because gamma of two is two. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way over through here, and we're gonna start combining terms. So I just pulled out this omega uh, sub n with the one half, and um, you know it's, now it's the negative one half, and then these two combine to give you omega to the negative 2.5, okay? And notice uh, this is, you know, you know, quite close, uh, if not exactly, uh, to our original goal in the sense that we have um, things in terms of A, we have an A, and there's nothing really else except for uh, um, the harmonic oscillator frequency has mass squared here. And this Kn is just this word here again. So this all, I think, uh, more or less satisfies uh, this idea if we go into complex time. 
So now the question is, uh, we have uh, this, this differential equation. How can we more or less representate things? Um, I think, uh, I, I'm not sure, I, this is the experimental part. I think if we throw the Mellon transform inverse, inverse Mellon transform, uh, on top of these uh, wave equations here, I think uh, the differential equation should give you um, these results, this, this general form right here. So this is very, very nice. Uh, this shows that we can actually uh, have an idea of complex time um, with the cashmere effect, and that maybe these Mellon transforms are deeply related to these uh, sums of harmonic oscillatory frequencies. So I've just notated here, I'm not sure if there's another notation for what I've just done, but this is just how I've notated it. Um, e to the uh, gamma sub two, and in this case, we plugged in two. So if we were to use beta, it would be beta um, A. A is the distance between the plates, and M is the mass. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, like, share, and subscribe.